together we, together we, together we praise <laughs> until the end of days. Together we praise <laughs> until the end of days, until the end of Father Soul said one thing. This one thing stuck out to me every time. He said it simply just like this. Either we together or we ain't. Together we are in the place to be. Beautiful people <laughs> in the place to be. Uh, together we <laughs> I came to groove. I got a question for you. What you came to do today? <laughs> I came to groove. Beautiful people, let me hear you say good morning. It's a beautiful day, it's a blessing to be here. Uh, my name is Jay Artis, it's the Most Soul Collective. Uh, thank you. experiencing technical difficulties. Your service is very important to us. Please stay on the line for the next available worship associate. Should this come back right up? Okay. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Welcome. Good morning, I am Connie Ordway, a member of our Board of Trustees, and I'm glad to welcome you to our Sunday service this morning at the UU Church of Columbia. We are a congregation striving to embody courageous love, radical welcome, and deep connection. And we are so glad you are here, bringing all that you are and all that you love and your deepest commitments to a more just world for all. Welcome. We are glad to be offering a live stream of our service and we would like to extend an additional welcome to those of you joining us online. We strive to make our worship accessible and those of you at home or using screen readers in person can find an accessible order of service at our homepage, uucomo.org. If you're on Zoom, we also have automated captioning turned on. For those of you with us in person, we invite you to attend carefully to the safety of all by leaving plenty of space, wearing your masks, and ensuring you are greeting one another in a way that is comfortable to both parties. We will not be singing hymns together as an entire congregation, although humming is allowed. We'd like to particularly welcome any visitors among us this morning and invite you to find our guest book after the service in the entry, if you didn't already, or in the chat, if you're with us online. 
We'd love to stay in touch with you about our goings on. Children and babies are always welcome in worship, and we also have a lively children's education program, children's religious education program, and nursery care for our youngest ones. All nursery caregivers and RE teachers are masked and vaccinated. Children will depart for their classes after our time of embodied prayer. If you have a joy or sorrow you would like spoken out loud during the service, you can write them on a yellow slip of paper by the piano. Is it over there? Oh, it's over there, sorry. <laughs> to, to, to be included in our time of prayer. Or if you're online, please include your joys and sorrows in the chat now so that they can be relayed to us in time for prayer. We invite you now to bring all your energy into this time and space with the help of our very special guest performer, Sifa Bihomora. Yeah. Or they already did it. Was... Never mind. <laughs> Good morning. Our opening words come from Margaret Weiss. Come into this place with your whole self, the parts that are raw and exposed, the part that is beaming with joy, the part that is seeking truth, the new, the possibility. Come into this place Open your heart, lay down your burden, lift up your hope for something new to happen. Come into this place with fellow travelers on the journey, some faces new and others familiar, and all welcoming you here now to this moment. Come, let us worship together. We are now going to hear him one or 10, 13 answering the, oh, you've already played that. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. One of those mornings, daylight savings. Um, we will now light our chalice with our words of affirmation. 
The, or we will now light our chalice, the symbol of our faith in the community that holds us and the bright flame of the human spirit that unites and calls us. Will you join us in our weekly words of affirmation printed in our order of service? Love is the spirit of this church and service is its law. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love and to help one another. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to this sacred space. A sacred space doesn't just exist on its own effortlessly. A sacred space is held by those who are within it. And beloved community doesn't just happen. It must be created by every person sharing their unique gift. For our centering today, I want to share a meditation that our youth group developed together that we start our years with often. I want us to begin by taking a moment to reflect on what you bring into this space today. What special gift you have to create a space where all feel welcomed and safe and able to bring their most authentic self. Perhaps you have a lively friendliness that welcomes people into this space. Or maybe yours is a quietness, an ability to listen and allow for deep connection to develop. Perhaps you bring a fierce protectiveness or maybe it is your willingness to challenge us to become something better. Is it your gentleness, your strength, your serenity, your humor, your perceptiveness, or your sensitivity? Whatever it is, find that gift and know its value. Feel it at your core and try to really imagine it as something tangible. Maybe it has a color or a texture. And now make that choice to share it and know that this is an act of love, of courage, of a willingness to be vulnerable and breathe into that choice and then breathe out. Imagine it moving outward from you, out around each person in this space, holding, cradling, lifting, dancing, let it move among us however it moves. And now imagine someone else's gift reaching out from them toward you. A gift entirely different from your own. A different color. A different texture. Something you know you need, or maybe something you never imagined you needed, until you did. Feel how they weave together, how they interact, strengthening each other, creating something stronger, something more beautiful, more sacred. And now imagine more and more strands 
as each person's gift holds this space together. How each one becomes part of the fabric of this space. Let's take a few breaths here. Welcome to this sacred space. May we hold it together. We're going to wing it here. <laughs> now is the time in our service when we uh, welcome uh, people into an embodied prayer of uh, stones and water. We invite you to come forward and select a stone and imagine it holding whatever you carry with you on this day. And then we invite you to place it down into the bowl of water Imagining it is our community and its help in holding you. If you have a joy or sorrow that you would like read aloud later in the service, you can write it on a piece of paper and light a candle if you want at our candle table, and that will be read aloud uh, for people listening at home uh, that you can write into the chat later on in the service when you are, if, if we get our tech going, um, to have that shared if you'd like it shared. Um, I invite you to come forward now. Just one of those things. Right. Days, man. It's like, it's okay, I'm wrong.
And now the children will head downstairs to their classes. Um, we'll get you all sorted in the greeting area and uh, Violet will sing us out. I invite you now into a moment of silence to center your hearts as we prepare to share the joys and sorrows of our community. We join our hearts with a member's sister who had a house fire on Saturday, which took the life of her grandson. Please say a prayer for her sister, for her niece and their family. We join our hearts with Maria Arpalo, who stepped down from the mayor's race yesterday. We join our hearts with Kevin McKiernan, whose uncle passed away this past Friday. Candy Iveson sends love to the family and friends of Cora Faith Walker. Advocate, mentor, role model for many, she will be missed. Margaret Tyler wishes Ellen Atkins a happy birthday. And from all of us at UUCC, we wanna wish a happy belated birthday to Reverend C.W. Dawson, whose birthday was yesterday. <laughs> David Lutold also wishes Helen ha Alan Hatkins a happy birthday. <laughs> uh, Tonette Repetto expresses concern for mothers and children displaced in Ukraine joy for the mothers in Poland leaving strollers and others items for them. We conclude in prayer with the words of Lynn Cox. Spirit of life who draws us together in a web of holy relationships, make your presence known with us and in us and among us. Remind us that we are not alone in history. Ignite us with the courage of the living tradition. Remind us that we are not alone in entering the future. Anchor us with patience and perseverance. Remind us that we are not alone in our times of grief and pain. Comfort us with your spirit, manifest in human hands and voices. Remind us that we are not alone in joy and wonder. Inspire us to honor and extend the beauty we find in this world. Divine music of the universe. Let our hearts beat in diverse and harmonious rhythms. Cooperate with an everlasting dance of love. May we move with the rhythms of peace. May we move with the rhythms of compassion. May we, may we move with the rhythms of justice, source of stars and planets and water and land. 
Open our hearts to all of our neighbors. Open our souls to a renewal of faith. Open our hands to join together in the work ahead. So be it. Blessed be. Amen. First reading this morning comes from Susie Kasem. We must all work in harmony with each other to stand up for what is right, to speak up for what is fair, and to always voice any corrections so that the ignorant become informed and justice is never ignored. Every time a person allows an act of ignorance to happen, they delay our progress for true change. Every person, molecule, and thing matters. We become responsible for the actions of others the instant we become conscious of what they are doing wrong and fail to remind them of what is right. And our second reading comes from the book of Luke 12, 48. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Before I sing, I just want to speak just for a moment. I, uh, we all have. 
have stories, we all have a journey. And um, I think about the journey that brought me to being here right now, right here in this place. And um, it was a time where my heart ached so strongly that I did not want to be anymore. Um, and I'm speaking about that moment and that time in my life because these songs that I'm about to sing, these words that I'm about to sing from my heart are reflective of a mission and a purpose that somehow I was able to connect to. And um, it started with me being pulled by people around me that loved me, that cared for me. Go sing in a choir, you have a voice, go sing. And I'm like, nah. I'm out in the streets, I'm out doing whatever, who knows what. And it was at the moments when I, my brother made me sing in the choir and something connected me to a true source of purpose and meaning. And if it wasn't for those moments, I may not be here in front of you singing right now. See, there's something that uh, my, one of my favorite jazz musicians, uh, Sun Ra, he talks about having an inner standing. Now, we can have understanding, we can have overstanding, but that inner standing is something that you have to do within. And that inner standing connects you to not just the universe, but he calls it the omniverse. Embracing and encompassing the all, the omniverse. And now that I I understand more, I understand more of what my true mission and my purpose is. I can sing these words with true conviction from my heart. And if you know these, if you know these words, I invite you into this place to sing and to call out to that omniversal understanding. But the words are simple, it's just I give myself away so you can use me. Quit messing with me like that. <laughs> Make me want to run, away, run all over church. Uh, may I give this to you? Because you know I moved all around. And I don't want to break something I can't replace. Say amen, somebody. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, say good morning. It's good to, good to be here with you all. Um, thank you, uh, my sister, for being the worship associate today. And Jamila, you did a really good job with the centering moment. I, uh, uh, I'm glad y'all came through. Somebody ought to say amen. So sis, you know, I've been here a few times. And um, I, 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 I'm nervous, Dottie, I, I'm, I'm nervous today. Scott, I, I've been doing this a long time, man. Um, yesterday I was 68 years old, and uh, I'm happy about that. Uh, I know a whole lot of folk thought they were a whole lot smarter, and they're not here. Now, those of you who grew up in a neighborhood, y'all know what I'm talking about. Eh? But uh, so, so um, I've, I've been allowed to gather one more time. Don't worry about y'all taking any of my time because I'm about through already. Um, <laughs> I want to thank my students uh, for being here today, for coming, uh, my logic students. So they'll be giving me a grade tomorrow, whether I'm <laughs> eternally consistent and if I 
if I if I uh, if modus ponens is uh, on the table. And then my members, um, Bobette and Cindy, they they come over and support me everywhere I go, and uh, I, I I truly I truly appreciate it. Um, Miss Dawson sends her sends her greetings. Um, she's she's doing babysitting duty. She's taking care of grandkids. Todd once said to me, my friend Todd, Todd, I love Todd. Todd said once to me, he said, you know, we really like it when you're here, <clears throat> but we really miss Miss Dawson. Miss <laughs> Dawson will say amen no matter where she is. She, she is a worshiper. And uh, I'm, I'm happy about that. Let me, let me, let me pause it a couple of things and then I'm gonna get out of your way. Um, I, I want to I want to posit with us today that all of us in this place have been blessed with at least a gift. I tell my students all the time, you have a gift within you, and 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 all of us are are, are gifted in very marvelous ways. I, I like. I tell everybody, uh, El Wali will tell you, I, I like coming over here with you all because you all are smart, because you all are blessed, you all are talented. I, I, I like being around folk who have and not afraid to share their gifts, particularly since we live in an environment now where folk are learning to be selfish. I wish I had a witness somewhere up in here. <laughs> We're teaching to be selfish. It's all about me and mine and I, and I don't give a damn about anybody else. We, we've been taught, Bobette, now to be selfish. And so I want to posit in the first instance that everybody in here has a gift. And, 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 and here, here, here's the interesting and I think universal truth about it that if you feed your gift, you find your gift, you feed your gift, you take care of your gift, your gift will make room for you. And what I mean by that is it may not be your heritage, it may not be your status, it may not be fame or fortune, but your gift will move obstacles out of the way. It will provide a place for you where you find meaning and purpose. I, I listened to Josh talk about there was a time he didn't think he was worth it. And, 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 and I want to say that all of us have had those, those dark moments of the soul. I, see, I thought I had one or two people with me here. <laughs> Where you, you don't know if you can keep on keeping on. You don't know if you can if you can make another day's journey, you don't know that it seems like the odds are stacked against you. That, and, and, and it doesn't have to be social political. It can also be health wise. I used to be, I used to really be proud of my body. Some folks say there was a time I was almost a world-class athlete. Ran 400 meters better than most. I could bench press 300 pounds. I, I was proud of my body, but some of us in here knows that there'll be a day. <laughs> See, I feel like preaching now. <laughs> there will be a day that your body will betray you. <laughs> Have I got a witness somewhere in here? <clears throat> and uh, and yet, if you hold fast to your gift, if you feed your gift, the gift will remind you that you are more than just body. You are a living being. And the second thing about gifts are, is that we ought not keep them to ourselves. They're to be shared among us. Look at here, we, we, come on y'all, we, we talk a good game. I'm talking about all of us. We talk a good game. I'm so happy y'all are sitting around 
and discussing the eighth principle? Oh, I thought you, you thought I didn't read that, huh? <laughs> Uh, I'm so happy you're having discussion groups about it. <laughs> Contemplating and reflecting, that's where you use are. <laughs> we bring up an issue, we know it's right, but we have to debate it. <laughs> I remember my friend Chuck Sweeney said that uh, sometimes he thinks that in the front of every UU church ought to be just a giant question mark. <laughs> because we want to debate everything. But I hope you won't reflect on this one too long because ladies and gentlemen, first of all, you already have shown the world that the eighth principle can be done. You had a black, older, Baptist, theist preacher come and be in your house. time for us to move beyond the wording because our gifts say we can do it. Columbia maybe more than ever needs you to witness to that principle because you already have done it. Now it's just a matter of putting it down on paper. Can I get a witness? takes personal inventory, it takes knowing that you have a gift. It takes a willingness to share that gift with those around us. I'm not gonna keep you long. I told Todd today again, I hope I can preach this as well in this pulpit as I did in the shower. <laughs> And I hope I don't go too old school on you. Cindy, in the little church I grew up in, they used to sing a song and it goes, I'll go, I'll go. <laughs> I'll go, I'll go. If the Lord needs somebody, here am I, send me. The battle against racism is not over. The battle against sexism is not over. Homophobia still plagues us. <laughs> See, an amen go right there. <laughs> and yet, is there anybody here that understanding that the battle is before us is willing to say, I'll go, <laughs> I'll go. My mama, if she was here right now, she'd say, my steps may be slow <laughs> and I might be friendless, but if, if love needs somebody, here am I. Send me. If, if, if there's some places and spaces where the disenfranchised and the disinherited are, if you need somebody, here am I. Send me. And, and look, I may be friendless. I may not have wealth. I, I may not have intellect like you. But if justice needs somebody, Salu, I wish I had a shout. <laughs> Can I send me every you, you in this building ought to say, here am I. Whatever gift I may have, I'm willing to take it to those places that are broken, those places that are troubled. Here am I, send me. And we got to remember that uh, wherever we travel, we do not travel alone. For we are surrounded by a mighty cloud of witnesses. Amen. Some folk who died, who lived, who died, who gave everything in order that we might build a, a beloved community. And so uh, 
is there anybody here who's willing to say, send me to the dark places, to the broken places, to the wounded places, to the ugly places, to the hurting places, to the broken places? Is there anybody here who has the courage to say, send me? And then my grandmother would have said, oh, who will come and go with me to the beloved community because we're headed to a promised land. Is there a witness in here? Here am I. Somebody say, send me. I feel Dr. Reverend C.W. Dawson, thank you. Time to introduce the individuals up here with me. Uh, on drums, we got. Give it up for Chris, y'all. Give it up for Chris on drums. <laughs> on piano, we got Luke. Give it up for Luke. On bass guitar, give it up for Drew. Everyone, give it up for Drew. And who we got singing to us on guitar right now? Give it up for Forrest, y'all. Thank you, y'all. truly feel the love if you feel so moved don't let anything stop you to get up on your feet and groove move your body to your left to your right uh, tap tap the foot uh, it's gonna be a moment at the end I'm gonna wait to the end the end I'm gonna have everyone clap together we gotta do one thing together at least at least one thing 
trying to make a living. What we do. <sighs> thank you all. Thank you so much. Um, uh, can I speak on something real quick? Because we need this love to be directed in the right directions. Uh, we definitely need the, the right resources, the equity. Thank you, for, thank you for standing. I appreciate you all. But um, I, my name is Josh. I got my name tag on. Real name is Joshua Runnels. Uh, but I go by J Artist. And usually there's a collective of musicians that we call the Mo Soul Collective. So usually I'd be like, hey, uh, we need a little Mo Soul. I'd be like, I heard y'all need a little Mo. And the band would be like, Mo Soul. Can y'all say that with me real quick? We need a little Mo. Say, Mo Soul. I heard y'all need a little Mo. And the reason why we do that is because we do need more soul music out here in Columbia and mid-Missouri. And so what we started, we started a monthly showcase series called Soul Sessions. And so if you have your phones, if you have Facebook, Instagram, go to at Soul Sessions Como. This is a community event that has nothing to do with me, but right now I'm the face of it because I got it started, but I don't want me to be the face of this. I want this to be a community event that can sustain even when people like me and these individuals move on. And it's so important for this because we need resources. We need people to understand the intergenerational work that can be done with this. So what we're doing is we're doing soul music. A lot of you all, y'all grew up in that era where soul music was at its prime. I did not live at that time. But I grew up in the 90s, and I, I, for some reason, went back to the 60s to jamming to the music. It's something, it, it, I felt it in my bones. I felt it, I can sense it with my eyes. It's like I'm saying in the lyrics, and I felt it. And I was like, this is real. This tool, this music, this art is a tool to connect communities through culture, through art, through all the things that we can connect on. And so right now, we need older generations to come and connect to this, uh, contribute to this, invest into this, so that the young folks have guidance. Because we're doing music regardless out here. We're going to do art regardless. But if we got that true wisdom from you all, the guidance, that connects in there is beautiful. And the community will build and expand. And now these individuals, kids, the next generations of uh, future leaders, they got guidance from you all. They got purpose. They got wisdom. And the community just continues to grow and prosper. So go ahead and please contribute to this thing by following at Soul Sessions Como. Come witness it for yourselves and have a good time with us. Thank you all. Well, you know, you did a little bit of work for me, too, because um, you're all feeling the love, feeling the soul. And um, I am um, representing the dedicated stewardship team. And um, we're grateful. This is the last day of our generosity campaign. And uh, we're really grateful for all of those who have pledged their gifts so generously and uh, given meaningful conversations to the stewards who've reached out to them. Um, for those who have not yet committed, submitted your pledge, we hope you will go online today and do so. It does take the gifts and commitments of all of us to reach this goal that we have together. So we will continue posting our updates on the website. And uh, we have a video for you, brief video of some of our members who are sharing what giving means to them. Giving to the church has helped me identify better who I am. And it goes back to that idea that by giving to the church, I'm, I give not only of my money, but also of my time and, and my energy. And, and in those moments, um, I've been able to, I, to, to learn a lot more about myself and to identify more fully who I am. I think our church makes Columbia a better place to live and to raise families and to challenge existing paradigms. And um, I think it it gives it makes this place more loving. I love that UUCC is personified um, or characterized in the community as, oh, that's that church, that's the social justice church. Oh, that's that church where, you know, if there's a rally or a statement or a, some movement to cause something to happen that's gonna make our world a more equitable and loving place, UUCC, I know we're not alone in that, but we're definitely 
along the forefront of those people that are helping to push those changes. And then I think in the last couple of years, just over the pandemic and everything, we have felt, um, well, I have felt really supported um, just by being able to reach out and talk to you or uh, send in, you know, anything that was going on and have it, you know, joys and sorrows on the live stream and stuff was, has, I don't know, that's been really nice. Um, <clears throat> and the Chalice Circle has been a really great way to meet uh, and get to know, you know, a Disney handful of people a lot deeper. Um, and it's uh, been a lot of fun too. I mean, we have a really great time coming to the church. Well, I'm the fifth out of six kids, and my dad was a minister. So um, the concept of giving and giving back and, and, and giving more to the world than you take from it is something that was instilled in me from as long as I can remember. Um, but every time we give to UCC, it feels so direct. It feels so um, like... I'm, I'm certain that these dollars are going to go to benefit the good of my community and the world. I'm getting teary about it um, because um, it just is so real. So, you know, we're, we're doing this campaign to help us be a truly welcoming environment where we can uh, change the building in order to actually accommodate the needs of everyone we want to welcome. Those things feel just so wonderfully joyful to be a part of, even if we're just a small part of it, to be able to contribute and help bring this vision of what our seven principles, um, what you Unitarian Universalists believe that by giving to UCC, I'm actually helping bring those about by our dollars, by our time, by whatever efforts we can put in. Before Isaac and I were members of the church, um, I the first, I guess a campaign for um, getting pledges and everything. I read somewhere in one of the pieces of literature that $15 was totally fine. If you wanted to give $15 a month, that was absolutely, it wasn't said like that. It wasn't said like it's absolutely acceptable. I think it was given as an example or something. I know that it was said in such a way that it made me think, oh, okay. because. Um, we didn't have a lot of extra income at the time, and I remember thinking, I can't do $25 or $50 a month, that's just not going to happen. But when it felt like that 15 was viable and important, um, and I was able to, you know, register and not feel like I was, you know, not contributing enough or was less than, you know, a person giving $200 a month, um, I was uh, celebrated just like everybody else was celebrated, and that just felt really wonderful. Um, and then our situation has changed and we've been able to contribute more and that feels um, really good as well. Uh, I know, you know, my job is to ask people to give money to my organization. And so I know what it's like on both ends, but now that I've had the experience of giving and being able to give more, I know how amazing it feels to give and uh, it's really nice. We actually sat down with the kids last night. We made our pledge last night. And we explained to the kids the church's needs and um, but that we were at a place where we couldn't give anymore. And so we had a talk as a family about ways that we could all give a little bit in order to give more to the church. So for example, the kids talked about getting rid of like the Disney Plus subscription and uh, so that we could give that money each month to the church. And then and we talked about um, giving up a monthly meal out so that we could give more to the church each month. And that felt really, really good as a family to make decide how we were gonna do that and how we were going to increase our gift because we really didn't have it in our budget. Um, but we did have other things in our budget that we could give up. Um, so I think that it felt good to do that as a family because it's not something we, Talk. We don't talk about money a whole lot with the kids, um, but that felt that felt really good. How does pledging to the church feel for me? It, um, I, I want to say I feel good about it, um, but I almost feel like it's my obligation because the only way that our church exists, the only way that it continues to do the things that it needs to do, is if it's fully funded and. 
if I'm not willing to put my wallet where my mouth is, then there's no possible way that this place can continue. And so therefore it's, it's an obligation, but it's also one that feels good to, to me. We are trying to live our faith um, in how we make choices in our lives. And I love being a part of a place where I, I don't have to hang my head at all. I can say, yes, UUCC, I'm part of that congregation. You ought to come. Our closing words are from the Reverend Wayne Arneson. Take courage, friends. The way is often hard. The stakes are very high. And the path is never clear. Take courage, for deep down there is another truth. You are not alone. Go in blessing and be a blessing to a world that needs our care. Let us share our benediction. Thank you.